Take it easy, old man, and nobody gets hurt. What do you want? What do you think I want? Your money. Give it to him, Henry. Yeah, give it to me, Henry. Hand it over. Gold? My grandmother gave this to me. And now you're giving it to me. Hand it over. If you weren't holding that gun, I'd... But I am holding the gun, Henry. <gasps> you folks have a pleasant day now. Done. Good. Now the students won't have to spend time copying down the problems, which will make up for the time wasted by your disruption today. Emil started it. But instead of ignoring him, you had to shove him to the floor. You can't just walk away from trouble, can you? You always have to go looking for it. Can I go now? Thanks for getting me in trouble. What's your uncle doing here? I don't know. And I don't want to find out. I can assure you, Captain Huffman, we will have a permanent teacher very soon. You've been telling me this for months now, Mrs. Bear, and frankly, I'm tired of waiting. Which is why I went ahead and found a teacher for you. Perhaps you should consider it, Joe. I I've met Lionel Dandridge. He's a teacher with an excellent reputation. He's taught at some of the finest schools in the Commonwealth, and he's a personal friend of mine. I value his judgment without exception. Now, I've spoken with several of the other parents, and they all agree he's the best teacher for this school. I don't know. I... If you decline, you'll leave me no alternative but to remove Emil from the school. How about a trial period? Say, two weeks? Fine. That should give us all plenty of time to realize he's the best man for the job. Joe? Who knows, it may just work out. Then Franz can go to Harvard as planned. Two weeks. He'll be here first thing in the morning. And Joe, what was that all about? Well, it looks like we might have a new teacher. If all goes well, it looks like Franz may be on his way to Harvard. Who's that? Afternoon. I don't believe it. It's Jasper. Hey. Jasper! Hey, hey Dan. Jasper, how you doing, buddy? I haven't seen you for ages. How you doing? It's been a long time. A friend? Yeah. Mrs. Joe, everybody, I like to meet Jasper, one of my best friends from Boston. It's an honor, ma'am. Hey, Nat. Jasper. Hey, so what are you doing out here? I came to see my old friends. Hopefully make some new ones. Well, then. It looks like you came to the right place. Hey, come on. I'll introduce you to the rest of the guys. All right. My husband and I founded Plumfield as a school for children from all walks of life. His passing has left a void in our lives. But in the children, I see the promise of a new day and find the strength to keep our dream alive, no matter how hard the struggle.
That is delicious bread, Miss Joe. Even better than Walman's, huh? Yeah, well, Mr. Walman was a baker in Boston. You just get bread from him. Yeah, he used to have this big oven. would warm up the room nice. We <laughs> see he got in there to warm our hands on the bricks. Yeah, until they kick us out. <laughs> yeah, Bostoners can get awfully cold. Yeah, especially on the streets. That's why I'm done with all that. I mean, after you and I left, I really got to thinking. I don't want to live my life like that anymore. I, I want to make something myself like you guys. Um, me and Nat didn't always see eye to eye. Not like me and Dan. Right, Dan? Yeah. So can, uh, Jasper stay, Mrs. Joe? Well, he's a little old for the school. Oh, I'm not looking for schooling, ma'am. I'm looking for work. I don't know exactly what I'm going to be doing as of yet, but I really could use a place. Just, I'll get my feet under me. A week or two at most. I suppose that'd be all right. But I don't accept charity, ma'am. I'll work for my keep. We'd appreciate that. That's the least I can do. We don't have any spare beds in the boys' room, and we're expecting a new teacher tomorrow. He'll be in the guest room. Well, barn will suit me just fine. A pile of hay in a blanket. I've died and gone to heaven. He's a friend of Dan and Dad's from Boston. He'll be staying with us for a few weeks. I was hoping you had some chores that he could help you out with. Is he a good worker? Well, I don't know. But he seems eager, huh? Dad's really fond of him. He's like a brother to him. What's Ned think of him? You know, Ned doesn't seem very eager to see him again. Well, I'm ready to work. What do you need me to do? There's some floorboards loose near the barn. You can help me nail them down. Yes, yeah, sir. Lead the way. You're one of the first people I met in Boston. He always looked out for us. Feels good to return the favor, doesn't it? Yeah. Autumn is so beautiful here. It's my favorite season. I hope the new teacher works out. Yes, ma'am. He comes highly recommended. That's good. We'll see. It's only a two-week trial period. I should prepare a report of the curriculum just to help him with the transition. I'm sure he'd appreciate that. You must be looking forward to finally going off to Harvard. Yes. It's what Uncle Fritz always wanted. Franz. I want to thank you for all that you've done here at Plumfield. Delaying going to college, putting your life on hold, it means so I, much. I didn't put my life on hold, Aunt Jo. I wanted to teach here. I, uh... I should go prepare that report. My neck really put me to work. My feet are killing me. You're a good guy, though. There's a lot of fun things with us. Not just chores. Yeah, I used to be a merchant marine. Sailed all over the world. Matter of fact. It's for me? It's going to get cold tonight. Miss Joe said to bring some more blankets. Pillow? I haven't slept on a pillow in years. That Mrs. Joe sure is nice. Yes, she is. You see, Nat? I'm not looking for trouble here, all right? Besides, I won't be sticking around too much longer anyway. You won't? The only reason I came out here was to get you. Me? For what? To head out west, like we always talked about. You can come too, Nat. Oh, well, thanks. You going west? Where? Oh, California, Arizona Territory, maybe. Maybe Colorado, see the Rocky Mountains. I met this guy who's working on the railroad line. He's come back from California. He said he saw trees out there 200 feet tall. There's no such thing. Sure there is. He said when he was down in the Arizona Territory, he saw this canyon, red as fire, mile deep, 10. Ten miles wide. Oh, he's 
talking about all kinds of stuff. Well, this place called um, Yellowstone. You guys hear of it? This place, there's this water, this boiling, steaming hot water, shooting straight up from the ground, three, four hundred feet into the air. Sounds incredible. It is. That's why me and you, we gotta go. Damn. You just say the word, we're out of here. What? You mean like leave right now? Oh. Why not? You guys got something keeping you here? I don't have any money. Well, uh. All right, took care of that. Got enough here for three train tickets to California. Where'd you get that? I'll work for it. Sure, you did. Look, Nat, you don't want to be a part of this? That's fine. But me and Dan, we go way back. I know Dan's been dreaming about this his whole life. I'm not Jasper. Oh, hey, hey. Don't worry about it. Think about it. Take your time. While you're sitting there in your stuffy classroom, at your little old desk there, just think about the world out there, just waiting, waiting to be explored. This is the dining room. Would you please ask the cook not to prepare anything with eggs in it for me? Eggs give me a rash. Of course. Franz, I'd like you to meet our new teacher, Lionel Dandridge. It's an honor to meet you, sir. The pleasure is mine. Franz has been teaching the children since my husband's death. I see. The students have just assembled for class. They've just assembled? <laughs> Why, it's nine o'clock. My husband experimented with different starting times with the children. He found that they were more attentive at nine o'clock. Well, perhaps you'd better show me to the classroom. Yes, it's in the barn. I'll show you the way. It's in the barn? Yes. Captain Hoffman didn't tell me the school was in the barn. Oh. Well, it is. Will there be animals present? Oh, no, no. They're down below. Will they give you a rash, too? Mm hmm My name is Mr. Dandridge, and I am your new teacher. Before we begin, a few rules. You will raise your hand before speaking, and you will speak only when I acknowledge. Young man, what is your name? Dan. Dan. Splendid. I will expect your full attention, an undivided mind is a focused mind. Nothing must distract us from the joy of learning. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, must have snuck in. Splendid. What are you doing? Taking a breather. You've been taking a breather for a half hour now. Well, you've been watching me? Spying on me from the bushes or something? Mrs. Joe also has a rule about no smoking on the grounds. Well, I'm not on the grounds, am I? I'm on the road. You're inside the gate. All right, all right. Don't want Miss Joe getting home, man. Hey, uh, Dan said you sailed around the world, uh, Merchant Marine. No, it's, it's a tough job. Can be. So is that why you uh, quit and came here? Couldn't handle it? What those ruts filled before lunch? Yes, sir, right away. Morning, Miss Joe. Good morning. How'd you sleep? Oh, like a babe, ma'am. Haven't been that cozy in years. <laughs> 
Thank you. Thank you again for your kindness. You're welcome. How's he doing? He's trouble. The sooner he leaves, the better. That's the same thing Fritz said about Dan when he first arrived. You know, at least he's trying to fit in. Unlike Mr. Dandridge, who's exactly like I pictured him. Fussy, narrow-minded, arrogant. The children are miserable already. It's gonna be a long two weeks. Yeah, it is. Children have finished breakfast. They're on their way. Huh. Did you write this? Yes, sir. Very well done. Intriguing, the curriculum here. But I, I must confess, I find the amount of extracurricular activity somewhat excessive. Walk in the woods, garden cultivation. Aunt Joe believes a large part of one's education occurs outside the classroom. Hmm. This morning, we will continue our study on fractions. As we discussed yesterday, in order to solve an equation involving fractions, one must first reduce the fractions to what? Uh, sir, I'm late. That's the third time in two weeks, Dan. I know. I got talking with Jasper after breakfast in the last track of time. It won't happen again. Dan, perhaps you'd like to solve this equation for the class. Uh, no, thanks. Not too good at math. Well, that's why you're at school, isn't it? To learn. Go ahead. Well, what must you do first? I... Find the least common denominator. Go ahead, Dan. Least common denominator. Well, take your time. We have all day. I heard about your difficulties in school today. Shouldn't have been late. You shouldn't have. I know that it's difficult adjusting to a new teacher. But even though it's just a trial period, you should still give it your best effort. And then if it doesn't work, well... Then, then... what? Everything will be back to normal? Captain Hoffman and the other parents aren't going to let Franz be the permanent teacher. You know that. I will find a suitable teacher. It... No. You won't. You keep thinking you can find someone as good as Mr. Bear was. But you can't. Hey, guys. Well? Give any more thought to come with me? I don't know, Jasper. I mean, Mrs. Joe will be pretty disappointed. Miss Joe's got you doing laundry, Dan. I mean, uh, look at yourself. Hey, here, come with me. I gotta show you something. Dan, we have a lot of things to hang up. I won't take long. Come on. Come on. I'll be fine, Mrs. Bear. A little recalcitrance from the students is to be expected when a new teacher takes over. I've dealt with this kind of behavior before. Still, I'd... I'd completely understand if you wanted to leave. I've said nothing about leaving, unless that is what you are suggesting. I'm not sure this is working out. But it's been only two days. 
I'll speak to Captain Hoffman, try to explain. Yes, he won't be happy about this at all. I realize that. But the children aren't responding well to your instruction. I, I'm not sure they ever will. I see. I'm terribly sorry. Oh, as am I. But I shouldn't really be surprised, seeing as how you'd made up your mind that it wouldn't work before I even arrived here. How could you say that? Because it's true. I have yet to feel welcome here, though I'm making every effort to comply with your rules. Effort? By alienating the children from the moment you walked into the classroom? Alienating? Yes. You didn't smile at them or try and make them feel comfortable. You just barged right in here with all your rules. Respect for the children may not be high priority at other schools, Mr. Dandridge. But here it is top of the list. Duly noted. Oh, yeah, I remember that night. I was working the lock, you went and broke the front window. I was hungry. You're taking too long. <laughs> you know those cops are blowing their whistles, chasing us <laughs> down the street? I can hardly run with that big old goose in my arms. <laughs> yeah. I remember you threw me the goose and drew the cops away so I wouldn't get caught. Yeah, I'd been in jail before, though. Remember, you hadn't, so. Yeah. I felt too guilty with you sitting in jail. I couldn't even eat the goose. Snuck it back to Clancy's, left it on his doorstep. <laughs> uh, I can remember when they finally let me out of that place, though. It was just before dawn, coolest morning, I remember. Not a soul in the street. It's up for you. Staying out there waiting for me. <laughs> yeah, we're far enough away from Plumfield now. This'll do. For what? A little target practice. Target practice? Take a look. Where'd you get that? Bought in Boston. It's a beaut, ain't it? Yeah, we're gonna need these when we go out west, right? You know, hunting food and stuff. Watch this. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! All right. All right, go ahead, take a shot. I've never fired a gun before. It's a bad idea, Dan. Shouldn't you be uh, ironing that? Oh, come on, that. You're shooting the windows. Sure beats uh, doing laundry, huh? <laughs> Got quite a kick, don't it? It's all right. A little bit of practice. Don't worry about it. We'll get you gun your own. <laughs> yeah, nice shot. You're natural. <laughs> Ready to go. Gotta tell Mrs. Joe. Tell her what? About the gun. Why? You're not gonna hurt anybody with it. I don't know. Wouldn't put it past them. Hey guys, sheriff's here. He's with some folks. They're looking for a man who robbed them out on the road a few days ago. He's short, kind of stocky. They couldn't see his face because he was wearing a mask, and he wore a hat. Could you tell how old he was? Seemed young, but I don't know. I really couldn't tell. Where's Jasper? Right here. What can I do for you? This him? Him? <laughs> These people were held up at gunpoint a few days ago. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Would you mind putting this on? And this? Find the guy. Oh, I will. Don't you worry. Well, uh, I still got a lot to do. Can I get back to work? Sorry to trouble you, folks. Thank 
give me a hand, Nat? You did it, didn't you? You robbed those people. No, I didn't. I told you. You got the gun. You got the money. Nat, I worked for that money. I told you that. I didn't rob those people, I swear. I think you should leave. I will. As soon as Dan comes to his senses. Because if you don't, I'm telling Miss Joe about the gun. You don't have to tell Miss Joe anything, Nat. I mean it, Jasper. You should leave right now. You don't know when to stop, do you? So I'm gonna help you a lot. You're gonna keep your mouth shut. You understand? Because you don't want nothing to happen to um, Miss Joe or anybody else, do you? Good. Now get out of here before I get angry. How are we all today? Good morning, class. Isn't it a splendid morning? Good morning, children. Children, yeah. Good morning, children. Oh, dear me, no. Good morning, children. It is a splendid day, isn't it? Splendid day. Breakfast is ready. Where's Jasper? Said he was going for a walk. Left pretty early. You think he robbed those people, don't you? Whether he did or not, that kid's still trouble. You don't belong here. If I had that attitude, Dan would still be on the streets. Dan's different. With him, you know where you stand. A guy like Jasper, you don't turn your back on. Well, he asked for my help. I couldn't turn him away. Joe. You can't save them all. You better hurry up and eat, Dan. You don't want to be late again. Why not? Dan, you're just going to make me do those stupid fractions. The equation was... One half minus one third, right? Watch carefully. This is a whole. Now, it's two halves. Two more cuts. And how many pieces do you have? Six. Right. Six sixths. How many sixths in half the pancake? Three. And how many in a third of the pancake? Two. Congratulations, Dan. You've just reduced the fractions to the least common denominator. So, three sixths minus two sixths leave how many? One sixth. And there's your answer. One half minus one third equals one-sixth. Hey, thanks, Ross. Now hurry up and eat your fractions. You don't want to be late again. Very well done, Franz. Dan. Just got back in from town. Guess what I bought us? Boston to St. Louis to San Francisco. We leave tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah, we can't stick around here forever. Come with me. Morning, Miss Joe. Good morning, Jasper. Dan? Mr. Dandridge has his pocket watch out again. You're late for school. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Joe. That's my fault. I, uh, I stopped to talk to him. I'll be right there. Promise. All right. 
Jasper. I'm not as concerned with what you've done in the past as I am with what you do in the future. If you truly want to change your life, I want you to know that we'll be here for you with whatever you need. That's, uh, it's mighty generous of you. Now back to school. All right, you coming with me? Hey, boy, how are you today? You want me to leave? You got it. But I'm not leaving empty handed. Mr. Dandridge, I was in town today. I saw Captain Hoffman. He'd like to come by tomorrow and see how you're coming along. I told him that you're coming along fine. He's very pleased, but he still wants to come by and see for himself. Splendid. I owe you an apology. You were right. I did judge you before I met you. I'm deeply sorry. There you go. It's worth a lot of money. Sure is. Thanks, Nat. You're gonna leave now, right? Like you promised. Oh, deal's a deal. Say goodbye to Dan for me, will you? Sure. Ain't gonna be the same without you guys. You'll do all right. I know I will. I wondered who was out here. I saw a light on. I was just... I was thinking about Harvard. What an incredible opportunity it is for me. Yes, it is. <sighs> then how come I'm not excited about it? Well, it's always unsettling when you make a big change. That's not it. I remember the first time Uncle Fritz asked me to help him teach the class. He was very ill that day. He had a terrible catarrh, remember? Yes, I do. He couldn't get a word out without sneezing. I was so nervous. I didn't think I'd be able to do it. And he said to me, that is precisely why you'll make a fine teacher. <sighs> a barn. What kind of school is located in a barn? The best school. It's getting late. Let's go in. California. Here we come. This is Joe. Is it true my uncle's coming here this afternoon? Yes, it is. Okay, don't worry. I'm not going to let him take you from Plumfield. Mrs. Bear, my pocket watch has been stolen. Stolen? I 
put on my coat this morning and it was missing. Well, did you misplace it? Oh, I never misplaced my pocket watch. One of the students must have taken it. Oh, I doubt that that's the case. The boys are very... Uh, maybe Jasper took it. Could you go and find him for me, please? Don't know where he is. He wasn't in the barn this morning. I know, because I saw him leaving last night. He had his knapsack with him. I'll tell the sheriff. Have him start searching the roads out of town. Take your seats. Bring out your pencils. Let's begin the lesson. There's the watch. didn't take it. What's going on? There's your thief, Mrs. Bear. My watch was in his desk. I didn't take it, Mrs. Joe. There must be a mistake. There is no mistake. This boy has been at odds with me from the beginning, and I want him expelled. What? Expelled? I have been very patient with this school. I've done my best to fit in. But at every other school, stealing is grounds for expulsion. We don't condone stealing at this school either. But... I took it. You took it? For Jasper. He said he would leave Plumfield if I took it. He had a gun, and I was afraid he was going to use he it. He had a gun? Why didn't you tell me that? He said he would hurt people if I told on him. I just wanted him to leave us alone. And he said he would if I took Mr. Jandridge's watch. And I guess he put it in Dan's desk. Why would he do that? Probably to get you expelled so you could join him. I'm just trying to help you, Dan. You've been dreaming about going out west your whole life. I can't give up on it now. I can't let you do that. So that's how you help me? You're getting me in trouble. <laughs> I had to. I'm going to save you from a life of schoolwork and laundry. Come on, you don't belong here, Dan. I do. Fine. Whatever you've been teaching him here, Miss Joe, it's not the same guy I knew in Boston. No, not the same guy. We help our friends here. Instead of stabbing them in the back. Well, guess I'll be on my way then. But uh, first, I think I'll... Uh, Take whatever money you got. Jasper, no. Get me the money. No! My money's in the house. Then send someone to go get it. Nat, Nat, my coin purse is in the parlor. Go and get it. Quickly. Well, I do appreciate your cooperation there, Miss Joe, but I am afraid I'm gonna have to take one of you with me for protection. You know, keep the sheriff off my back till I'm good and clear. Now, since good old Danny boy here don't want to come along, maybe, uh... I'll take your little boy there. No. Nick! Watch the gun! Nick, be careful! Dan! Watch out! No! Get the wagon hitched. We're going to see the sheriff. I'm really sorry for taking your pocket watch, sir. And I'm ready to accept any punishment. Including expulsion. It clearly Nat did it to protect Plumfield. He should be punished, but not expelled. Oh! 
morning, Lionel. Good morning, Captain Hoffman. Everything in order? I'm afraid not. I'm tendering my resignation. I knew it. It's because of the lack of discipline, isn't it? These boys are unruly. That's not why I'm resigning. Why, then? My asthma. It's a fine school. I heartily endorse it, but my constitution is not suited to living on a farm. But I don't see why you need look any further for another teacher when the school already has a fine one. Franz? Why, well, he's still a boy. He's a gifted instructor with skills both unique and refreshing. I wish I'd had an instructor like him when I was a boy. I endorse him without reservation, and Captain, I think you should do the same. Would you like me to speak to the other parents? No. If you feel this strongly about the boy, then let him teach. Would you like that, Franz? Very much, Aunt Joe. Splendid. Thank you, sir. The pleasure is mine. Jasper's in jail. Sheriff found money in his knapsack along with Mrs. Albright's brooch. Well, you were right. I can't save them all. Don't mean to stop trying. You're always seeing the best in folks instead of the worst. Maybe one day I'll learn how to do that as well. I don't always see the best in people. I didn't see it in Mr. Dandridge. It's a beautiful spot. Yeah. I still can't believe that Jasper did that. I can't believe I was actually thinking of going with him. Well, I can't blame you. The idea of going out west is very exciting. Yeah. I'm sure you'll go one day. Well, you can't stay at Plumfield forever. your schooling and you'll be on that first train headed west and all those wonders that you've dreamed about will be right at your fingertips just waiting to be explored